Wyndham Hotels and Resorts makes travel possible for all. Whether it's the long haulers looking for a great cup of coffee, a roomier rest for the on a whim road trippers, or a place to make summer memories with the whole family. No matter who you are, where you're going, or why, with 24 trusted brands to choose from like La Quinta, Days In, and Super 8, your Wyndham is waiting. Get the lowest price at WyndhamHotels.com. Restrictions apply. Visit website for more details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 3. Hello, America. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here across the nation. Open line Friday, the phone number 877-973-7425. If you're on the phones, though, you do have to be patient because I got a lot to talk about. I want to get something off my chest here. Uh, and I, so, I, a full disclosure, I've, I've gone back and forth on whether or not I, I really wanted to... to bring up this topic because it's for some of you it's it's a little bit of a sensitive topic um it's about an individual some of you know and like and but i you know i i want to talk about this i feel very badly for mike lindell the ceo of my pillow i i'm i'm not a fan uh i so i at some point in my life became a pillow snob. Um, like I hate hotel pillows because they get so flat. I don't like those, the, the pillows. Like I, 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 I just, it, it bothers me that hotel pillows are such garbage that somehow people want these pillows that go completely flat in the night or you, you got to pile up a bunch of pillows. And even at my house, I change pillows, um, more regularly than than I used to, in part just because I want a good night's sleep and I don't like flat pillows. I don't want overly hard pillows, overly fluffy pillows. I, I just I, I want a pillow where I can turn over on my side at night or sleep on my back and it's comfortable. And it's taken me a long time to find good pillows. My pillow is not an option for me. I don't like my pillow. I know some of you do. But we actually were offered at one point. Uh, to do ads uh, or an endorsement is like, I can't in good faith do an endorsement because I don't like my pillow. I know some of you do. Uh, I know some of you like it. It's just, it has never been a comfortable pillow for me. I, I do not like it. I'm not a big fan of Mike Lindell. I think the man went off the deep end. But I feel very badly for Mike Lindell, the man, wh- whether I care for him or not. Mike Lindell is is kind of a quintessential American success story. The man was an addict a very serious addict. He started using cocaine at about 20 years old, I think. He lived a hard-charging lifestyle. When he was in his 20s, he was using cocaine and then switched to crack cocaine. He had been a, a fairly successful businessman, but he had a gambling addiction. In his teenage years, this is one of the reasons I, I have concerns about so much of the media now pushing sports betting uh, as if you can not enjoy a game without placing a bet on it. Um, the rise of, of easy, accessible gambling addictions to, to young men, and I know the data out there suggests, well, there's more uh, drug and alcohol addiction, the gambling addiction, but gambling is, is, it's not exactly been around as long as the drugs and alcohol for a lot of people, online sports betting. I just can tell it's, and I'm not opposed to it. I'm literally going to Las Vegas tomorrow. I'm not a big better. I don't bet on sports. I just like to watch the game, but most of my friends do. And I can just see this doesn't end well for us. Mike Lindell as a teenager developed a gambling addiction and then it, it became a cocaine addiction. Then it became a crack cocaine addiction. He lost his house. He lost his wife. He, he lost a lot in life, and he turned it all around. He found Jesus and prayer and became sober. Mike Lindell has spent a lot of money helping other addicts recover and get back on their feet, and he's done it with the faith message, and I, 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 I got to admire that. I've got to admire a man who spent his own money, not the government's, but his money to help other people overcome what he overcame.
it's just been sad to watch his decline over the last number of years. He helped put up the money to fund um, the attempts to overturn the 2020 election. He didn't just become convinced that the election was stolen. He became convinced that it was the um, the voting machines. It was electronic voting machines. And he's being sued for libel by those companies. In a court filing yesterday, the law firm of Parker Daniels Kibbert LLC said Mike Lindell and my pillow are months behind on their legal bills in the three defamation cases, and the law firm can no longer afford to represent him. And they're not alone. His Washington, D.C. law firm that's representing him also wants out of the case because he's not paying the bills. The firm uh, closer to home uh, said that if they're forced to continue providing legal services to Lindell, the future fees and costs will amount to millions of dollars. In addition to the millions of dollars Lindell already owes them, the firm has been defending Lindell in defamation lawsuits filed by Smartmatic and Dominion Voter Systems, as well as a third lawsuit brought by former Dominion employee Eric Coomer. All three claimed their reputations were damaged by Lindell's repeated fantastical claims of fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Lindell praised his lawyers as brave and courageous and said he would gladly keep paying them if he wasn't broke. We lost everything, every dime, all of it is gone, he told NBC News. His company has faced financial challenges amid the lawsuits and sustained bad publicity to the point he can no longer take out a loan. This is a tragic story, and there will be, I realize, people on the left who feel no sympathy for the man. There are people who say he shouldn't be sued for his statements. We have free speech in this country, and those people are ignorant of free speech and what it means because you can say anything you want. But if you say something that is demonstrably not true, you get held accountable for saying lies about other people. Your free speech stops with accountability when you lie about others. And the things Lindell said about Smartmatic and Dominion voting systems, they're not true. And he's going to be held accountable just as Fox News was. But there's a larger issue here, that, and this is the heartbreaking one for me. I, I know people who like Mike Lindell. I, I, I know people who are friends with Mike Lindell. I know people who hang out with Mike Lindell. And I just wonder, did it occur to any of them to look him in the eye and say, man, you've crossed a line. You're on the verge of crossing a line. I I have a very good friend, all of you know, who struggled at one point in his life with addiction issues. And he was commenting to me about someone else you all know, that this other person's behaviors can be explained by this person's struggles with addiction. That essentially uh, this friend of mine who had struggled with addiction was saying of this other person we all know, Uh, that their behaviors were because they were trying to bring the 12 steps of recovery into this process, and it was the words of an addict still addicted, and his addiction had transferred from drugs to something else. And when I see and have seen Lindell and this chaotic mission against Smartmatic and Dominion voting system machines and and the wild claims he was making, I mean, let's take off the table. Take off the table for a second. Those of you who think that the election was stolen, um, I, I, as I can see, there were all sorts of problems with the election. There, there's no election that that's perfect, and there was gaming of the system. It did happen on both sides, but all, uh, we're not talking about any of, of the claims about uh, absentee ballots and voter harvesting and stuff. We're talking about the, the machines throwing the vote to Joe Biden. There's not only no evidence of that. 
in many states like Georgia, there was a hand count of the ballots, and it's simply not so. These claims have no grounding in reality, even though there are some people who can believe they are, Mike Lindell being one of them. He rose to prominence making these claims. These claims are – he's liable for these claims because he libeled the companies. He slandered the companies. He, he defamed the companies, and they're suing him, and they will collect, and he's out of money. This is a larger story. It goes beyond Mike Lindell. It's, it's not really about Mike Lindell. It's about our society. It's about people who rise to prominence, who have friends who stand in the shadows. And uh, the question becomes, are those friends real friends? Who, when the cameras are gone and the microphones are pulled away, can whisper in someone's ear and say, you went too far, you need to say you're sorry. And that's why I, I connect here and feel bad about Mike Lindell because I, I, I increasingly I'm, I'm mindful of, of just where I am and, and what I do in my quest for global radio dominance, if you will, the, the number of people who enter the orbit and their hangers on. They're not real true friends. They're, they're not people who will whisper in my ear and say, you shouldn't have done that. You should say you're sorry. You should conduct yourself differently. And I, I wonder if any of these people in Mike Lindell's orbit, are they really his friend? Uh, because if, if they really were, did any of them tell him you're you're getting too close to the sun? You don't want to be Icarus. He's going to lose everything. Donald Trump's not going to write a check to help him. None of the people who flew with him on his private jets are going to say, here, let me help you. None of the people who went to his press conferences and cheered him on and egged him on are going to say, let me help you cover your legal costs, Mike. He passionately believed in something that was not true. And he will bear the consequences of it. And now who's going to be there to help him pick up the pieces? That's, that's the tragedy of Mike Lindell is all these people glommed onto him. They loved him. They've celebrated him. They've, they've taken him to events. They put him on the stage. They've given him a platform. They've cheered him on. They've egged him on. They've encouraged him to be bold, be loud. Uh, and it, it's going to cost him everything. And where will those people be when the lights and cameras and microphones are all gone? Or are, are the where were they when he was flying so close to the sun? And this happens so often, and it happens particularly in, in political celebrity. I, I really, I think of Cindy Sheehan. Remember Cindy Sheehan? Cindy Sheehan used the memory of her dead son to go down to Crawford, Texas, and stand outside George Bush's ranch in 2003 and denounce him and his war, and she became a cause celeb of the left. They put her on TV. She was on TV all the time. She was outspoken. Her son, if you were to believe her husband, the whole marriage collapsed around her crusade, it seems. Her son seemed to be a passionate believer in the country and in the war effort, and, and she used the, his, his, the memory of his dead body to inflame the situation. You know, I, I mentioned this back then. Red State had come been taken off and I was writing at Red State and that she was essentially dragging her dead son's body to Texas by memory to defame and slander the president over his war efforts, not just in Iraq, but Afghanistan as well. And it was the very first time I got death threats in my life. Progressives were furious, I would say that about her, but I stand by the remarks. And what happened? The left put her on a platform. They promoted her. They put her on TV. They put her in press conferences. And then she faded away. She started saying more outlandish and crazy things, and no one intervened. No one stepped in. No, no one said, Cindy, maybe it's time to stop. Maybe it's time to take a break. They just kept getting her closer and closer to the sun. Mike Lindell, Cindy Sheehan, so many others. We as society do this, and it's just it, it's, it's sick and appalling to me. I feel genuinely terrible for this man. And there will be those on the left who say you should have no sympathy for this man, what he did. But I do. I, I have such, I, I just, I, I feel bad for him. 
He believed in something that was not true, was surrounded by people who cheered him on, and no one whispered in his ear and said, Mike, slow down. You're going too fast. This might not be true. You could get yourself in trouble, and he's going to lose everything. And those people who surrounded him and cheered him on and to this day make him a hero, not a single one of them is going to write a check to a legal fund to pay his lawyers. He's going to lose everything because of it. It is the tragic story of Mike Lindell. And from it, we can all learn a lesson. Surround yourself with people who are truly your friends, who are bold enough and brave enough to whisper in your ear, that's enough. Be quiet. Apparently, he didn't have anybody in his life doing that. And no one will be there to help him pick up the pieces, except he'll find out who the real friends are, those who do show up to help him. Guys, if you're a small, mid-sized business, you're struggling with HR issues, you have employees not showing up, or you got to do a termination, you need onboarding of employees, maybe there's a sexual harassment complaint, you want an HR manager, you don't want to be the bad guy with your employees, Bambi can play the role of HR for you, $99 a month, available by phone, email, real-time chat, they do onboardings, terminations, they help your team members get to peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations regardless of which state. They're great. Now, they're U.S.-based. They, you got somebody to talk to who's dedicated to your team. They give you access to HR expertise, and they add personal touches. So even though they're outsourced by your company, they really feel like they're a part of your team. That matters. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast. When you sign up, it'll help my show. Bambi.com, B-A-M-B-E-E.com, Bambi.com, Eric Erickson in the podcast tab. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I I would like to dedicate this entire segment here as a moment of shame on one person. Tomorrow, I'm taking my team to Las Vegas. We have radio meetings out there, and and we're going to go to the Monday night football game. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders versus the Green Bay Packers. I own the Green Bay Packers. I'm going to go watch them play. One of us who will remain nameless does not have TSA pre-check. And it's not just that he doesn't have TSA pre-check. It's that he's prideful, prideful about not having TSA pre-check. And for some reason, will not bother to go get an appointment. I would pay for him to have TSA pre-check, but he doesn't want to bother. So the rest of us breeze through security while he's getting his prostate checked by the TSA agent. That might be why he doesn't want TSA pre-check, come to think of it. And then we got to sit on the other side and twiddle our thumbs and wait for him to show up. I'm taking a friend with us. He has TSA pre-check, but Philip, come on, man, take one for the team. Go get your TSA pre-check. Shame, shame, shame. I can move on now. It infuriates me every time this happens. Why do I even travel with him? Okay. (laughs) Just come on, man. It makes it so much easier to travel. Patriot Mobile makes it easy for you to fund the conservative movement. All you got to do is move your cell phone service to them. You move your cell phone service to TSA, to to Patriot Mobile. See, see, move your cell service to Patriot Mobile and you get guaranteed great service using the same cell towers you're already using more likely than not. And they fund the conservative causes you care about. They fund parents running for school boards around the country who are conservatives battling the wokes. They fund the Second Amendment movement, the pro-life movement. They fund conservatives around the country. It's such a great idea, and all you have to do is move your cell phone service to them. You can even take your existing phone number and move it to Patriot Mobile, so you don't even change phone numbers. All you do is go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric. PatriotMobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. You can zoom into your house, see how good the 5G, the data, the voice is, all the services you already have. You can get them from Patriot Mobile. If you want to do it on the phone, you call 972-PATRIOT, 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation with my name at 972-PATRIOT or go to PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. 
Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Y'all, I'm I'm this is this is not an oversharing moment. I just I find this it, it's hilarious and I also like I just got a gold star. <laughs> I feel so bad for the guy. All right, so I decided during commercial break, I, I'm at my my studio office, um, not not at my flagship station, my, my own office, and it, it's in an office building, and they've got light sensors for the bathroom. So you go in an exterior door, and when you walk past the sensor, the light comes on. When you go into the bathroom, the light comes on, and you got to actually step into the bathroom. You can't just open the door where the light sensor's placed. you got to actually step into the bathroom for the light to come. And I'm like, oh, this is great. There's nobody in here. The lights are off. I get to the door, like it, it, like it, it's, it's bad. Someone clearly at some point let loose in there, and it, it was awful. As I open the door, and I hear some poor guy is in the bathroom, and he's in the stall, and has been there for so long. The lights have turned off, and he can't get up to move his hands to do it. It's like, please turn the lights on. I didn't want to walk into the bathroom and stuck. Ah, I haven't used the bathroom, but I did do my, I took one for the team and stuck my arm in there and waved to turn the lights on before leaving. Poor guy. I don't know what's going on, but that poor dude needed some help. He, I, I mean, I've never been in there long enough to have the lights turn off on me, but this man has managed to do it. Somebody say a prayer for who's ever in that bathroom. Good Lord. <laughs> All right. On that note, I'm going to go to the phones. It is an open line Friday, 877-973-7425. Michael, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Thank you, Eric, very much. I enjoy your show. Thank you. I got a comment and a quick question. All Uh, right. It's about a couple of books that have been made in the movies. They both have a a similar premise. One is called A Time to Kill, and the other Mm -hmm. one is To Kill a Mockingbird. Both those were books and were turned into movies. And the premise of both those books, who people who don't know, is can a black man receive a fair trial in the South? So my question is, can a conservative receive a fair trial in a blue area, in a legal area, that's a Democratic area, can that person receive a fair trial? Not if he's Donald Trump, I don't believe. (laughs) So much you write a book. Yeah, look, um, it, I, I, I think <laughs> this is so so let, let me explain this in, in all seriousness to everybody. I think Trump gets a fair trial down in Florida uh, and, and he could get a fair trial in Fulton County because the media wants you to believe it's this, this bright blue area. But there are actually some very right. Republican areas in Fulton County. The problem is in that New York case, it is, I think, completely dependent on the judiciary there, which to their credit has been pretty fair to him. Like, for example, this trial that's going on with his properties, I think that judge gets reversed a lot on appeal. And I (laughs) I will honestly be shocked if Alvin Bragg's case makes it to court. Um, Given the legal precedent he's trying to set, I don't know that. I, I really will be shocked if the state and federal courts in New York allow Alvin Bragg's case to go because He's essentially claiming something that in the history of our republic has never been claimed before, and I don't think he can do it in that case. But if it does go to trial, I don't see how you find a fair jury in New York City. I, I really don't. I realize there are Republicans there, but I, I don't see how you do it. Uh, in the in the Jack Smith case in the District of Columbia, I don't know how you find a fair trial there. I mean, look at just take Fulton County where I think you can find a fair trial. I think you can get a fair jury. The grand jury, look at the, the, the kooky woman who chaired the grand jury who went on MSNBC. Um, You're going to have these situations. I it's, it's going to be very, very hard to do. And I do actually think, and this is one of the downsides here, Michael is because the Jack Smith case in DC involves so many defendants, I would not be surprised if some of them try to cut a deal and then that hurts Trump's case overall. Um, It's, it's the legal. I'm less worried about the legal ramifications than I am the jury. If it makes it to trial in those cases, Um, it's, it's a great point. Uh, It's also a point that you're not going to get out of the media. 
because the media doesn't care. They're not fair. They're they're completely biased against the man. If I rate the cases against Donald Trump, the Alvin Bragg case again, I actually will be surprised if the Alvin Bragg case makes it to trial. Alvin Bragg is essentially claiming Donald Trump violated federal campaign finance law and therefore violated the state laws of New York. There has never been a case like this, and in fact, the legal precedent suggests you cannot bring that case because federal law says to bring a campaign finance violation against a candidate, you have to bring it in federal court. No one's done that. What Bragg is saying is that Trump violated federal law and as a result violated New York law. And I, I, it is so legally dubious, even his predecessor in office and most of the lawyers who have worked for him said you can't bring this indictment, and he did. When you look at the other trial in New York, uh, one, you will note that Donald Trump's, cam- Donald Trump's legal team did not want a jury trial. I mean, this case that's going on with the property in New York, the reason that it's not a jury trial is because Donald Trump's lawyers did not ask for a jury trial. They could have checked a box that they wanted a jury trial, and they chose not to. For Donald Trump to now come out and say, oh, why aren't we having a jury trial? We should have had a jury trial. His lawyers chose not to. That's not appealable by Donald Trump. You need to understand that, despite what his team is saying and what he is saying. He can't appeal that he doesn't have a jury trial because his lawyers chose not to. Now he can sue his lawyers for malpractice. I don't think he's going to. I think they made the conscious decision they couldn't get a fair jury. Let's leave it to the judge. I don't think they got a fair judge, and I think a lot of it gets uh, reversed on appeal. It is notable, and I guess to some degree correct the record, that $18 million valuation for uh, Mar-a-Lago, that's the tax assessment valuation, which sounds right, actually. Um, the tax valuations are far less than like free market bank transactions. So for taxable author- for taxable value, $18 million, is actually in line with properties, and it's what the local Palm Beach tax jurisdiction came up with. And it was kind of uh, inflated in that the the Trump team saying this judge found Mar-a-Lago to be worth $18 million. It turns out the judge didn't do it. The judge just reflected what Palm Beach tax um, what the Palm Beach tax people did. The problem is that what the judge then did is he equated that to what banks would value at, and that's where the mistake comes in. And I think that's reversible on appeal. I think the statute of limitations issue uh, is reversible on appeal. Uh, it, it's it's I, I just it's it's a dumb case, not as dumb as Alvin Bragg's case. The only really serious case for Donald Trump, and, and they're all serious to a degree because they're I mean they're being prosecuted, but the really serious case that Trump is going to have to deal with is the case in Florida on classified documents. And that case is before a Trump appointed judge in an area of the country that uh, has a generally conservative pool of jurists. So that one, I think he can actually, uh, he's going to get a fair trial on that one. And I don't know that they, they may find him guilty. I don't know that they send him to jail in that case. The problem for Trump in that case, and this is is a very easy problem for you to understand, is that he's being charged with withholding classified documents from a grand jury. It's a very cut and dry case from my vantage point, whether you think he had the right to do so or not. When a grand jury subpoenas information from you, when it subpoenas documents, it says hand over all of these documents. And you give them documents and say, this is all we have. When the FBI then comes around and finds a hundred some odd more documents, that's kind of prima facie evidence you didn't give the grand jury what they wanted and you broke the law by doing so. His, his, the jury, the response should have been to file an objection to what the grand jury wanted and his lawyers never did that. And ultimately that's on him. And again, he can sue his lawyers for malpractice, but he can't get out of the, the criminal situation. That's the dangerous case in my mind because it's so cut and dry in my mind that when you first have archives, say, hand over documents, and you give some and say, this is everything we have, and then a grand jury comes and says, actually, there are more. Give us all the documents, and he gives some more, and then the FBI shows up, and you find even more documents – It doesn't matter whether they tried to hide the documents. It doesn't matter whether they tried to delete video footage. It doesn't matter whether they moved documents. It doesn't matter whether he tried to keep documents from his lawyer. What matters is they found more documents. The subpoena was very clear. Give us all the classified documents. You clearly didn't give all the classified documents. 
you can argue over whether or not they were classified or not, but they had the classified markings on them. And the grand jury asked for all of the documents that had the classified markings, and you clearly didn't give them all. Therefore, you clearly did defy the grand jury. Therefore, you clearly broke the law. It's a very cut and dry case. You can quibble about the uh, some of the, the outer peripheries of it, but it's fairly cut and dry when the grand jury asks for info and you don't give it to them and the FBI finds all the stuff. That's a very difficult fi- thing for him to get out of. It's a very difficult case for him to get out of. That being said, they'd be absurd to throw him in prison for that. So he may be found guilty but have no jail time. He can still run for president. He can run for president and be in jail. If that's the way the Constitution works. That blows people's minds, but it's true. The Fawny Willis case, I think she's the dog that caught the car and is about to get run over by it. Same with Jack Smith in, in Washington. And the Alvin Bragg case, Alvin Bragg's an idiot, and I think his idiocy is going to be exposed. You know it's bad when even MSNBC won't talk about that case because it's such a bad case for Alvin Bragg, not Trump. Now, back to the phones. Linda, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Oh, Linda, shoot. hi. You there? Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, did I accidentally... Uh, Shut it off. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, this By the way, I appreciate you saying that- shoot instead of a word you're not supposed to say on radio. Thank you for that. Uh, this is a comment on something I think you were talking about yesterday about uh, environmentalist complaints about the 20 miles of wall yes. in whatever county that is and the cute little ocelots and so forth. Uh, well, where I live in central Florida, there are roads with wildlife corridors underneath them, uh, mm-hmm. mandated, and they tend to be large, like, okay, bears, uh, uh, Florida panthers and things. But it, it's really not rocket science to uh, get something like that and size it for a cute little ocelot, because a cute little ocelot-friendly corridor is not going to be big enough for a human. Right. It, it, it's basic mechanics it's like are you smarter than a fifth grader and there's a, unfortunately, <laughs> this is a lot joe Bi- have you seen aren't. joe biden speak linda i'm not sure he is no he's not and <laughs> unfortunately i'm not sure if the epa guys are, are either yeah no so i i will tell you um we we know today that they're building them on they're like pontoons that have spacing for small animals to get under them. Uh, and it actually turns out uh, for there are legit reasons to build them on these pontoons. Uh, one, because they do think that once these walls are set up, uh, that the illegal aliens are going to go in a different direction. And these walls are, by build, being built on the pontoons, they'll be able to move them where they're needed. But there's another issue, and I didn't even realize it. So it's a Texas desert, but it has a rainy season, and it floods yeah, so too. much. Yeah, Mine and too. and so by being on these pontoons, these walls can ultimately float. Uh, if if the rivers rise, the creek they're going to be put in dry creek beds where people are crossing, uh, and they're afraid that it can cause all sorts of, of flooding issues unless these things float. They're anchored so they don't float away. It's it's kind of a neat engineering concept. I wasn't I, I well, there was a video last night I saw I think on Fox News about how they're building them. Um, and it's just, it's kind of remarkable, but at the same time, they're designed so the ocelots will be able to flow through and not the people. Um, the environmentalists are bellyaching anyway, cause they're like left wing <laughs> activists who want illegal aliens to come in. Uh, but you're right. I, I mean, they do have ways to build these things and, and make it, uh, but the man, the environmentalists are so upset by waving the endangered species act. Um, yeah, but, I, I consider myself an environmentalist, but I do have a brain, you know, there's yeah. ways around it. And, you know, by the way, so I've seen uh, driving down to, to Orlando, uh, when I go down to WDBO down there, the like, there are areas where, like, they have signs about wildlife crossings and stuff, and, like, the road is elevated for them to get under. Uh, out in Las Vegas, the they do it. Yeah, in, in Las Vegas, they've got overpasses that are for the uh, mountain goats to be able to cross. So, yeah, it's 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 totally doable. Uh, and yeah. doable in a way that the illegal aliens can't can't do it. So thank you for that. That that's that's a great point. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend, uh, y'all. Before I get out of here, I got to tell you about Americans for Prosperity because they're doing a nationwide bus tour, maybe coming to your area, to educate people not just on why Bidenomics is bad, but how you can reignite the American dream and the way you ignite the American dream, reignite it is to deregulate and get government out of the way of small businesses. 
Um, so many of the burdens of regulation fall on small businesses. Americans for Prosperity are educating even state governments and some state governments that may not even be inclined to work with conservatives, but realize we got to like uh, or stimulate the economy. And the way to do it is through deregulation. It becomes very easy to do through deregulation to help small businesses. So they're educating people. and They want your help to do it, and they want you to be a part of their tour. All you do is go to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric, americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. You, you sign up. They've got over 4 million activists nationwide involved. They teach you. They educate you. They give you the information to be the smartest person in your circle of friends, the most knowledgeable person on these issues. So people come to you and get the information. You educate people easily. You go to your state legislatures, even your city government, school board, tell them how to reignite the American dream. You become an advocate for free people and free markets and small government. Go to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric today. Sign up with them. Be a part of this great mission around the country. Over 4 million people are a part of it. americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Uh, so stop me if you've heard this one. A campaign says something salacious happened, uh, and it turns out uh, they didn't actually tell the truth. Vivek Ramaswamy's campaign uh, yesterday, he was in Iowa and um, said that protesters at a coffee house rammed his campaign car. Police, on the other hand, say that a woman was eating lunch at a deli, backed out of a parking spot into the campaign's rental vehicle. Report was taken and the driver was released uh, with a summons for unsafe breaking or unsafe backing. The driver was not at the protest, didn't know who it was, and did not intentionally back into the vehicle, nor did she flee the scene of the accident. Uh, after Iowa police released a statement saying that what the campaign said happened did not happen, uh, the campaign released a video of a person in a car flipping off Ramaswamy that does not actually show the collision. While claiming that the video showed the person screaming, laying on the horn, and then reverse ramming into the candidate's parked SUV, the video doesn't actually show anyone reverse ramming into the candidate's parked SUV. Uh, so apparently now the Ramaswamy campaign is attacking the police in Iowa, uh, claiming that the police in Iowa are lying. Um, I think I'm going to believe the local police department that doesn't have a dog in the fight. Um, come on, people. Come on. Are we really going to believe that the police are in this to make a presidential candidate look bad? The police, really? I'm just, I'm so freaking tired of the entertainment brand of politics when we have such serious issues that we as a country have to deal with. China, by the way, um, there's a story out in the Wall Street Journal, is beginning to kidnap uh, foreign executives. That's right. Um, bankers and executives who are in China doing business are oftentimes grabbed by Chinese authorities. Once they're in the country, the Chinese issue a ban on them being in the country and then go grab them and detain them and interrogate them about the business practices of their businesses and harass them. That's a pretty big deal. But I bet until this moment when I told you it hadn't gotten a lot of airtime because people have been covering a protester hitting Vivek Ramaswamy that the police now say wasn't a protester, it was just a woman who by accident backed into his rental truck. And now the police are getting attacked by his campaign as liars. I think I'm going to stand and back the blue, my friends. I think I am. You guys have a great weekend. I will talk to you all on Monday. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.